So the next talk will be a language which I think is pronounced Setlog by Maximiliano Cristia and Joe okay. Francoisi. Yeah, I'm here. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Not, not uh, Grace Setlog. Log or something? Setlog. Setlog, okay. So please, the floor is yours. You have 10 minutes. Please share your screen. Yeah, yeah this is good. Okay. So this is a, um, a joint work with uh, Gianfranco Rossi from uh, Parma University in Italy. Setlog is at the intersection of several concepts or techniques, in particular formal verification. We, the, the main application problems for, for Setlog are formal verification, in particular with automated proofs. Uh, it is also, a declarative programming language. You can you can write programs or formulas in a very declarative way. It is also based on constrained logic programming and prolog. In fact, is setlog is a prolog interpreter. It's a prolog program, but using concepts and techniques working as a constrained logic programming. And finally, is based on set theory and religion algebra. In particular, it, it's close, the expressiveness of the, of the language is close to specification languages such as B, Z, and Alloy. So setlog is basically a, a constrained logic programming language and satisfiability solver where finite sets and set operators are first class entities. So for example, here is uh, um, the code, set, set low code for the minimum of a set. Here, min computes the, the minimum M of set S and the, the set log program for this is M is uh, an element of S, where in here it, it's set membership. And uh, for each X in S, uh, M is uh, less than or equal to X. Uh, for each is also uh, a constraint uh, in yeah, set membership, and for each are constraints in the language. For each, it's simply the, the, the standard definition of uh, restricted quantifiers, that is for all X, if X belongs to the set, then M it's less than or equal to X. So as I said, mean is a program. If you consider that you the, the input for the program is the set and you want to get the, the minimum of that program, then you can call mean with a set, with a given set, and it will answer you uh, which is the minimum. But you can also execute mean as a more as abstract program. For instance, here, instead of giving a number, I give a variable as an element of the set. So setlog will compute all the possible solutions for this uh, predicate to be true. So in this case, one of the solution is that int equals equals uh, equal three. Uh, as long as uh, y is greater than, than three. And the other solution is that m is equal to y, as long as y is less than or equal to three. In, in this regard, is the set log operational semantics is basically that of a constraint logic programming language. But mean is also a formula or a specification. So we can prove properties true of this specification. For instance, if I have that uh, M is the minimum of S and N is the minimum of S, then these two values must be the same. There's one, only one minimum of, of a set. So if I call set log uh, as to compute the negation of this implication, the answer is no, meaning that there are no values of S and M that uh, satisfy the formula. So we know for sure that the implication inside the negation is a property, is a theorem, it's a lemma. 
uh, if we if we call set log with something that is not actually a property, then it will return us a counterexample. In this case, it will, for instance, if we if we try to prove that the minimum of a set can be two different numbers, one less than the other, then th that's not true. So set log returns a counterexample. In this case, it says that a possible counterexample is S being the set with element M and a, remain, a reminder A, another set. Uh, this set constructor is uh, interpreted as the union as much as in the previous talk. Uh, and in that, um, we have a more, more constraints that M should be equal to N, to N and this for each must be, uh, must hold. So the, this counter example can be easily satisfied by substituting A by the empty set. In this case, we, we have S equal to M and this for each is trivially satisfied because this turns to be the empty set. This, all this is to say that um, set log can uh, perform automated proofs. So in set log programs and formulas are basically the same. We say that set log code enjoys the formula program duality because set log code behaves both as a program and as a formula, it can be used as both as a program and as a formula. So we talk about four grams instead of programs, combining formula with program. The expressive, expressiveness of set log includes fin, finite set theory, finite set relation algebra, and integer arithmetic. As I said, this is more or less the same expressive power of specification languages such as B and Z. The automatic, automated proof capabilities of set log are based on the implementation of several decision procedures. Uh, set log implements a, a decision procedure for the Boolean algebra of sets of hereditarily finite sets, HFS. It also implements a decision procedure for a very expressive fragment of finite set religion algebras. It also implements a decision procedure for finite sets extended with restricted intentional sets or set uh, form annotation. It also implements a decision procedure for the Boolean algebra of finite sets plus cardinality constraints and linear integer arithmetics. And it also extends this later decision procedure with, int with integer intervals. Finally, it implements a decision procedure for restricted quantifiers, such as the for each constraint that I just shown in the previous slides. Uh, Maxine, uh, two minutes. Two minutes, okay, good. Uh, this is part of a uh, work in progress. With this expressive power, we can encode uh, arrays. So for instance, we can define a foreground, a set log foreground representing an array, A of length N. N. So if uh, that's it's true if uh, N is uh, more than zero. A is a partial function or a function if you want. And the domain of A is the integer interval from one to N. This, this is the classical definition of array uh, given in, for instance, the B notation. All of, all of these, uh, P fun, DOM, uh, and DOM are constraints in the language. And int is a set term representing the uh, integer interval from M to N. In this way, we can define the minimum of an array, basically taking the, the range of the array and then computing the minimum of that set. We can also write the minimum of, of an array uh, of dimension n using 
the for each constraint. In that case, we we look for we, we establish the existence of an index an index k such that the order pair k m, which is the minimum of the array, belongs to the array, and for each order pair in a m is always uh, less than or equal to x. We can also write a more imperative-like foreground by computing, by explicitly computing the minimum uh, in each iteration of this program. Uh, as you can please, see here, we have- the time form. is up, please, please okay. jump to the conclusion. Okay, good. So my conclusions are, should we study programs more deeply? Programs are inefficient, but uh, they have nice properties. Uh, can programs be turned into efficient implementations? For instance, through automatic refinement or a change of the running platform to a less, less abstract one. And we wonder whether our programs in other programming paradigms, uh, in particular, we see that one of the key aspects of having programs is that the existence of, of uh, decisions procedures for for the set theory. So we wonder where there are decision procedures in other theories, like for instance, list and functions for programming languages, for functional programming languages. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.